Hello world, it's Siraj and I'm here with my friend Etan. Hey, I'm Etan. I make interactive multimedia art and uh, we're going to work on a robotics project together. Yeah, so I had the idea for a hardware video and Etan came to mind. So Etan, you want to say what the project yeah, is? Yeah, for sure. So it's this idea that I've been thinking about for a while, how the internet is very voyeuristic and we're constantly sort of looking through our screens at other people. But what happens if now the screen looks back? We're going to take a screen with a camera and put it behind a Venetian blind. And then if, this, if the camera picks up a face, the blinds will close. And then as the blinds close, they won't see a face anymore, so they'll open. So what happens if our screens look back at us instead of us just looking through our screens? Yeah, this is going to be awesome. So we're going to show you the hardware first and then the code. So shall we get started? Yeah. Let's do it. There's the Raspberry Pi we're going to use. What else? So we have the, the Raspberry Pi camera, 8 megapixels. All right. We have a case for the camera also, so it doesn't get ruined. Nice. Then we have this board over here, which is, a, which is going to be a hat we put on top of the Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. which will let us control the servos. Perfect. And the servos are over here. I got an extra one just in case, because nice. I didn't want to mess up while we're doing it. That's what I'm talking about. And then finally, here is the uh, power supply for the servos. I need to configure the... Um, the operating system to be able to talk to this particular display. Mm -hmm. So you have to put a special config.txt file on the chip in a particular directory. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you boot up the Raspberry Pi, this display will work and not just display a bunch of like random white lines. Okay, so we have the new config on the SD card mm -hmm. and we're gonna put it into the into the Raspberry Pi. Perfect. And then now when we plug in the Raspberry Pi with the screen over here. It should um, turn on. Let's see if it worked. Yeah. And work. Ooh. Oh, there we go. It's working. So I have everything working. My mouse is working, and my keyboard should be working in a second. So we could open up terminal and start start. Typing away. So right here we have the uh, this integrated circuit, which will let us control these servos. And with, why this is important is it's um, a PWN PWM controller. It stands for pulse width modulation. So the servo, which is over here, is controlled via a series of pulses from the from the computer or the integrated circuit. The problem is the Raspberry Pi's integrated circuit. Um, the Raspberry Pi is uh, GPIO output, which are these pins over here, which send signals to periphery devices. Um, it, there's only one, I think, that has the precision that we need to control the servo that we have. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they created this hat, which just is a sort of, which is a device which will sit on top of the Raspberry Pi. Once we solder it in, it'll sort of sit right over here. Um, and once, and what this hat allows us to do is have much more precise control through a series of libraries th uh, on the Raspberry Pi to actually control the servo as we desire. So once we have this working, we'll be able to, and these aren't, these aren't soldered in just yet. Once we have this working, we'll be able to take the input from the camera when it detects a face and send an output signal over the GPIO pins through this hat to control the servo how we want, at the, and, and we'll turn the blind accordingly. So now we're just soldering in the connections to the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm gonna look at it to make sure I didn't like solder any of the pins together, because that would mess it up. So just making sure that all the soldering is done well. So we'll put these connectors in this way, and then we'll show you, once, once we solder it in, we'll be able to take the servo and just slot it right on top, slot it right on top of these connectors, and we should be good to go. So we're taking the Raspberry Pi camera, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna put it inside of the Raspberry Pi case, just to protect it and make sure that when we, so it gives us a nice clean surface on the back, to be able to stick it to the wall. Perfect. So we just pop out the case. I don't want to break it. So, oh, there we go. There we go. So on the camera, there's this little blue tab. We just pull it off so we can actually, so the camera 
we don't ruin the camera so the camera could see out. Mm -hmm. Slide it in over these little spokes and the buttons so it sort of sticks nicely. And then find the, the, um, and then I think we, oh, then, oh yeah, the divot is in here. So just sort of this, the tab, which, which powers the camera sits in nicely and we slip on the cover and, and that's it. There it is. The Pi camera is protected. So now we can play around with it and don't have to worry about bumping into it in any weird way and we'll be able to install it efficiently. So now we're going to install the camera through the hat because we finished all the soldering. We've done our single set of output pins mm -hmm. um, and by this so we have to slide the camera right through here so we don't uh, so we don't and we didn't want to do it while soldering so we don't want to solder the camera so we want the blue side of the of the um, of the camera facing the black side of the um, of the raspberry pi because the, the connecting pins over here go up against the connecting pins on the inside of this uh, connection. And all we do is we slide it in gently and it should just slip right into place. Up and there it goes. So now, now the camera is in securely so if you pull on it it shouldn't slide out and we could add, now I'm going to add back the the top of the of the Raspberry Pi case. So it goes right over there is the first thing. So it slides in nicely. And then this guy, this top piece also slides in really, really nicely. And once, once after I reattach all the screws, this camera, this, this hat will slide in and it will attach into the GPIO pins on the Pi. It should just slip in really nicely. Oh, and there it clicks in and now the hat is attached and it's not, not going anywhere and we'll be able to control it from the Raspberry Pi. The question now that I'm talking with Siraj about is like, how do we install OpenCV on the Raspberry Pi? Because we're going to need to use OpenCV to um, determine if we see a face or not. The problem I've had in, is that OpenCV3 is there's no pre-compiled binary on Debian, yeah. so it's like such a pain to compile it from source, especially on uh, this Raspberry Pi because it's a, it's a relatively slow. It's quick, but compared to the original Raspberry Pi, but still a relatively slow computer. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to install an older version of OpenCV yeah. so that we could just get it pre-compiled and sort of work in Python 2 instead of Python 3, even though that's what I would have loved to do. But yeah. So Siraj has been videoing me, so I'm going to video Siraj back. Videoception. There we go. Look at that. Oh my god. Camera's working. So there are two modules you'll need to install onto the Raspberry Pi. OpenCV will let the camera detect faces and Pi GPIO will control the servos. And then for the code, we'll look in main.py. So other than OpenCV and NumPy, we've got two helper libraries here. Pi video stream will read in our video stream and blinds will open and close the blind by issuing servo commands. So named window will initialize the frame that we can get the images from. And then we can start the contents of the video stream using the start method of our helper class. Then we'll initialize our blinds object, which we'll use to open and close our blinds in a second. And in this while statement, we can continuously get the images from our video stream. And we'll use the imshow function of OpenCV to get the image from the frame. And then using the read rects function, we can detect if there is a face or not and store that in the rects variable. If the rects is not empty, that means that we've detected a face so the blinds can close, else they can open. Cool, so all, all, what we're doing now is I'm up to the stage where I want to attach the blind to my wall. So I'm just going to put it right, right here on the wall. Nothing special because the screen's going to be behind it. And in order to do this, we're going to use these handy mounts that come with the blind. We have the, um, the set of Venetian blinds nailed to my wall correctly on the studs so things don't fall down. Then up here we have the servo, which is sort of jankily attached to the turning motor, the turning mechanism of the blind. So when the servo turns, we'll, we'll, it'll turn the blind mechanism instead of the standard like stick. 
that we turn. Then attached to the servo, it goes directly into the breadboard. So I broke the little um, the hat I had last time. And what this is is just the breadboard, which has the 5 volt connection connected to the red servo line, the ground connection to the brown servo line, and the data connection to the 18th pin on the, um, on the Raspberry Pi. And this is, that's just the pin I've chosen to do the pulse width modulation, the PCM output on, which will then control the servo accordingly. Uh, and I'm using the PIG, um, the Pi PGIO library, which works really well and lets me do effective pulse width modulation. Then that connects to the Raspberry Pi, which, which controls both the camera, which will look at us when we're in the frame, and the, um, the Raspberry Pi screen where we'll see ourselves and, and our picture. Um, now, we'll close the blinds and get everything working. Gently. Very exciting time. Very exciting. So we got to make sure all the blinds are correct. Sweet. Cool. So now they're closed. And we'll just run the, uh, the main program. So open TV should start working and my face is on the screen and it doesn't recognize me just yet. But if I take a step back, camera now sees me and the blinds close. Now it won't see me anymore and the blinds open. But now my face is here, so it closes again. So it constantly will go back and forth, blinds opening and closing while I stand in the frame. If, we, if I step out of the frame, Now both Siraj and I are outside of the frame, the blinds should stay open because there's no, there's no face. But if we peek in, they close. Yay, it's working. Please subscribe. And for now, we've got to clean up some hardware, so. Thanks for watching.